So team, keep it clean. What's going on, baby? I hope y'all doing real good on this Saturday morning. Uh, I'm recording this at 7.18 a.m. Uh, after this, I'm about to go on a run. I'm, I'm, I feel real refreshed right now. I really do. Um, yesterday, spent the whole day with the family. And, and we have a lot of family days, like, all the time. Just because you see, like, a plethora of videos and a bunch of videos all the time. Me and the fam, we spend a lot of time together because I think that's super important. Um, and whatever it is that you do uh, for work, you, you got to take breaks. You got to take time off. You got to step away from it. You can't just be work mode 24-7 all day, every day, and that's it. You got to be able to <sighs> take a breather from it. Um, but I, I appreciate it yesterday because I got the best sleep that I've gotten in. I don't even remember the last time I got sleep that good. That's why I feel so refreshed right now. Like, uh, like uh, me talking about going on a run at 7, 18 a.m. on any day, that's crazy. But anyway, I'm, I'm just really happy. I'm really grateful for y'all. Um, I really appreciate the fact that y'all, uh, the way that y'all support on here, but I appreciate it even more when y'all support other people that we bring on. Uh, we had, of course, the video that y'all saw yesterday with Coach where he was really just breaking down everything about Todd Monk and a lot of stuff that I didn't know, a lot of stuff that other people may not have known, but Coach, he broke it down. But the fact that y'all not only supported that video, but went over to his channel to go support him as well, that's special, and I appreciate that. So thank you for doing that. I always appreciate when y'all do that, man. Whenever we bring somebody on, y'all go support them as well. That's that's real right there. So thank y'all for doing that. Um, I got to give a special shout out to the newest Team Keep It Clean patrons because I haven't officially shouted them out yet. It's uh, my guy Jai, uh, King Coin, and Justin C. So I appreciate y'all. Because shout out to all the Team Keep It Clean patrons. Shout out to all the Team Keep It Clean channel members. Shout out to everybody that's just showing extra support for the channel. Because y'all go out of y'all way to do something that y'all really don't have to do. So that's what makes that even more special. The fact that it's not a requirement. So thank you for that. And just thank you for Team Keep It Clean as a whole. I really appreciate everything uh, about all of y'all. I seriously do. Um, it's nice seeing comments from a lot of the same people. It's nice seeing comments from new people too. But when you see comments from familiar names, it's like, oh, okay. You, you, you sort of get to know their personality or their, at least their Ravens personality. How, when it comes to Ravens stuff, how they feel about different things. Good, bad, happy, sad, whatever it may be. But everything is done with respect. I appreciate y'all. I, I appreciate the fact that we can have a conversation. We can have a conversation uh, and we may not agree, but I appreciate the ones that keep it respectful. Not everybody does that. And I know I had I put this on Twitter yesterday, uh, but I, I got to say it here, too. I, I, I know sometimes y'all probably get tired of hearing me say that, that I appreciate the ones that can have a conversation respectfully, whether we agree or disagree. But not everybody can do that. Being on this platform or whatever, I've had a lot of people make posts, make videos, make pictures, make this and that. Uh, about me uh, in like a super negative way, a super disrespectful way. I've had it be done. I got, got one yesterday too. Somebody made well, either yesterday or the day before or yesterday. They made one uh, picture of me and this other content creator. And I ain't going to put him on blast because I, I don't know how he feels about it. I don't even know if he saw it, but I don't want to bring it to his attention. And I don't want to like, I don't want to kill his vibe because me, uh, unfortunately, we used to that stuff already. We used to people just going out of their way to, to, talk bad about us in a super negative way to, to speak ill will about it we, we used to that so but I don't know if he is so I, I'm not gonna shed light on who it was or whatnot because I don't want that being on him I ain't trying to kill his vibe or mess up his in it and I ain't trying to do that none of that but um when I saw that I didn't even get mad I didn't even get mad because they, they, they had a picture of me and him they were like oh these guys are this and that and the third and da, da, da. Oh, okay whatever like I always say, if, if you like what we do, if you like what we talk about, if you like the videos, hey, great, I appreciate it. If you don't, hey, great, I appreciate it. Just keep it moving. I, I, I never understood why people would go out of their way to talk bad about somebody else. If, if you don't like what they do or you don't like the way that they do it, let it be. Let it go. Why waste time in your day to go out of your, your take your time? Because time is something you can't get back. And I, I know like we, we, we spend a lot of time like talking about everything but Eric B. And we're going to get there in a little bit. But I guess this, this stuff just had to be said. Time is something that you can't get back. So why waste it hating on somebody else? Seriously. T time is something that you, you can never get back. You can get back money. You can get back 
a car, a home, a job, this, that. But t- you cannot get time back. You can't. So why would you waste it being doing something so negative? Regardless of how you feel about this, regardless of how you feel about that, regardless of how you feel about him or her or whatever. Why would you waste it like that? I just never understood that. And I always reference it to when if, if somebody doesn't like if somebody doesn't like a show. Like if you're gonna try it out the first time you watch an episode, you're like, oh, okay, nah, I ain't really like that. But then you go back and you're like, you know what, I'm, I'm gonna try it again. I ain't really like that. Then you go back and you try the third time, and I'm like, hey, okay, okay, that's cool. My sister in law, I was just talking to about, talking to my wife about it um last night. She was like, her her sister, she said her sister said that you got you gotta really try something three times to see if you really like it or dislike it. And I thought about it, I said, oh yeah, you know what, that's right. Because the first time you try it, you might be like, oh, I don't like it, because this happened to me with Chipotle. The first time I tried it, I was like, uh, Chipotle, nah, don't like it. Second time I tried it, I was like, oh, hold on, it ain't so bad. The third time I tried it, I was like, oh, okay, I love this, this is really good. So if I would have just went off that first time, I would have never had the plenty of experience that I had with Chipotle. But it's the, it's the same way with anything. So if, if you try something, like with a TV show, you try it, you first watch it, you're like, oh, I don't like it. But I'm going to give it another shot. I've been hearing a lot of buzz about this show or whatever. I'm going to give it another shot. You try the second time. Ah, uh, mm, uh, you know, I don't like it still. You go ahead and try the third time. Okay, uh, you know what? It's not for me. Are oh, you going to spend your time sitting there talking, oh, man, I hate this show so much, but still keep watching it? Go out of your way for to do something that you really don't like? It, it, that, it just doesn't make sense to me. So when people do stuff like that, like, like I said, I'm used to it, so it, it don't phase me no more. It used to phase me a little bit, but it, it don't phase me no more. But when people do stuff like that, it's like, for what? What what do you get out of that? So anyway, um, that that was that. So uh with Eric B enemy. Eric B enemy. And again, that's I say all that again to say that that's why I appreciate when people when we can talk about stuff and we could disagree with stuff. If people if they agree with something I say, if they disagree with something I say, cool. But it's done with respect. Don't go out of your way to do like Silly stuff like that That's just that's, it's, it's immature and, and these are grown people That's the, that's the what make it worse I, I, I've had it done by kids before But it's, it, there's grown, it's grown people do it more And it's like really? You're grown Grown people married Grown people with kids And, st- and it's like really? You're grown and you're wasting time On something like this I, 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 I can't call it man I don't know what it is But anyway I love y'all I love y'all. I really do. Um, Eric B. Enemy. I got to make sure I put timestamps on this video. <laughs> Eric B. Enemy, who had um, been a hot topic of, of a name for really the past three years. Um, we had all been wondering, like, man, with Eric B. Enemy, uh, when is he going to become a head coach? Uh, we had heard he had been on a lot of different interviews and whatnot. Um, but, and I brought it up before. I was, like, wondering, like, man, like, why... What's going on? What happened with him? Um, he is a, a Super Bowl champion. Just dropped my phone. Uh, Super Bowl champion. Before, he was a one-time Super Bowl champion. He was still get all these interviews and stuff, but nothing happened. And he was offensive coordinator for the Chiefs. But now he's a two-time Super Bowl champion. And it was like, okay, well, as two-time Super Bowl champion as offensive coordinator, like, there's people that don't even get, get to Super Bowl as offensive coordinator, and they get jobs as head coaches and stuff. So what's up with Eric? And, and again, for him to be leading Patrick Mahomes in that offense, and and even if um, I know some people might say, oh well, he had the best quarterback in the league, which he does, but still, it's, it's been guys with worse quarterbacks that have gotten jobs. And I I, I asked around about it and stuff. Um, I, I asked around about it like like why why is Eric Bieniemy just not getting a job? I know one guy hit me up and he was like, oh, it's because of his past, because he got some stuff that happened in his past, and that's. That's the reason he ain't get it, been getting a job. I'm like, nah, I, I see what you're saying, but at the same time, this is the NFL. This is the NFL. Like, a lot of these dudes got a past. A lot of these dudes got a current, a present. Um, and they still be getting jobs left and right and keeping their jobs left and right. So with Eric being it, it was like, uh. And not that we excusing anything that happened in his past or really any of these people's past. But that's like, uh, I, I couldn't buy that one. Then somebody else said, oh, well, because he's a poor interviewer. Mm, uh, uh, I don't know about that one. Uh, really? A poor interviewer? 
after all these years, all these interviewers, I mean, excuse me, all these interviews, and that a poor interview, mm, yeah, I, I, I don't know. But it's just, just been, like I said before in previous videos, it's, it's been a weird dynamic uh, with Eric B. Enemy. Um, but now he has finally uh, accepted a job as oh, not, not just offensive coordinator, because, yeah, he is offensive coordinator for the Washington Commanders. But he is also an assistant head coach. Um, so he is like, all right now, all right now, Eric. Um, and that's a um, that's a nice little role because he gets a lot of things. He gets those two titles. Uh, he gets a pay raise. Um, and he also gets something that he did not have at all in Kansas City. And I just read about this this morning because I did not know this at all. But in Kansas City, literally for every single season. These past five seasons, he has been on one-year deals. Five seasons in a row, he's been on one-year deals. I thought it was just the past two seasons, but literally the past five seasons, he's been on one-year deals. And the way that it, it was worded was like, oh, well, that, that, gives, that gave him an opportunity uh, to to move on from the Chiefs at any time, and and it does. It gave him a, gave him an opportunity to leave after every year, but they kept resigning to one year deals. Um, but at the same time, it also gives the Chiefs an out. It gives them an out after every single year, where it ain't it ain't no more. It's like signing a player to five one year deals. After every year, you can think about it, talk about it. Hey, if you want to play it back, cool. If you don't, if you don't want to play it back, all right, cool. No financial commitment. No. You know what? Take out the financial part too. No commitment at all. No commitment. And it's like when you think about that, it's like wow. Five one year, five one year deals. Five. It's it's just it's a weird dynamic. Over I don't know what it was, but it's just weird. But now he has a multi year contract with the Washington Commanders. And again, that's that's something that he didn't have in KC. Now he'll be able to call plays all by himself. That's something that he didn't have in KC. And it's it's a, it's a shame that um again yeah he he had to he had to take a different route than a lot of people have had to take. He had to take a much different route to become uh, just to, to to just become an offensive coordinator. He ain't even had a head coach yet. Yeah, he's an assistant head coach, but he had to take, he had to do, go through all these hoops, just become an offensive coordinator on another team. Um, but now this should uh, hopefully lead him to uh, bigger and better opportunities in the future because he um, he will be running a, a team, running an offense of a team that's going through some stuff. Again, they expect it to be sold any day now. To who they end up being sold to, we'll see. Um, but there's a possibility with him being an assistant head coach. Uh, this this thing could it could go several different ways. If they are so say for instance Ron Rivera it just he fails there, or he want to retire. I don't know. Whatever happens, well, if Ron Rivera doesn't work out for whatever reason, um, depending on new ownership and whatnot, they could see what Eric did on his side of the ball, and they could be like, you know what, we think you would be a good fit to be our next head coach. Let's do it. Let's do it. Or on the flip side, if if they could be like under new ownership and whatnot, they could be like, uh, oh, Eric, no, no thanks, no thanks, we don't want to move forward with you. So it's a big risk. It's a, it's a big risk, but at the same time, with him having that multi year deal, um, he has financial security now for however it goes. Whether it goes good, hey, great. Hope hope that it does go good. But if it goes bad, it's not a one year deal now. It's not where, all right, well, it went bad. <laughs> well, your contract to be up, and then you can go wherever you want. No, they, they got to take care of him still because he got m a multi-year deal. I got to see exactly how many years it is, but it, it ain't no one-year thing no more. So that's 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 dead. The one-year deal thing is dead. So shout out to Eric being to me for that. I'm, I'm happy for him, and I, I really do. I really am interested to see where this goes. Um, I know I talked to a, a lot of Ravens fans <laughs> once this news came official. And we would have talked about this yesterday, but like I said, we was out all day yesterday. 
Um, me and the family. But I talked to a lot of Ravens fans. They did a lot of them sent DMs, and they were like, "Man, we we could have had Eric being." I, I saw some people feel like they the Ravens settled for Todd Munkin and whatnot. But anyway, um, with Eric being me, uh, I just wonder because it's a, it's a lot of stuff that we just we'll, we'll never know. We'll never know the conversations that he had with the Ravens, but I wonder if it was a uh, if it was a power issue. I wonder if when he spoke to teams, if excuse me, I wonder if he told them like, "Hey, um, this is not my last stop. This is not going to be my final place of work. I'm not just gonna be in somebody's offensive coordinator and that's it. I need more. I need it to be more." Uh, I want to be in a head coach. That's what I'm aiming for. So what do I need to do to get there? How are you going to help me get there? Because when you go on a job interview, it is about how you can help this company. It's about what you can do at this company. You want this company to hire you for whatever the position is. But at the same time, uh, companies really do appreciate when you not necessarily challenge them, but when you ask questions, too. Because that can show you done your research. That can show that you really are a motivated individual who really wants to move up in that company. It's like, hey, what can you guys do for me? What, what, what is your, uh, what kind of program do you have to, so I can climb that ladder of success, so to speak? Companies appreciate that. Hiring managers appreciate that. So with Eric B. Enemy, I wonder, again, we didn't hear anything, anything like that, but I wonder if that was something that, Sort of impeded him becoming Ravens offensive court. If they even talked, I don't even know if they talked. So I don't know. I'm not. I'm not sure what even happened with that. They obviously didn't interview him, but I don't even know if they even like talked in the first place to get things started. Like they talked to Cliff Kingsbury. So and who who knows? Maybe Cliff Kingsbury would join the staff or something as a quarterbacks coach as a wide receiver. Because because you know Ravens offensive staff is not done being put together. They ain't finished, um, but I just a, a lot of times when you um when you think of something uh, before it happens, like with Eric Bieniemy, we had a lot of conversations and thoughts about him possibly joining the Ravens, what it could be like, and da 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 da. Uh, so we've been thinking about it for a while, but now it obviously isn't happening. Um, so then you think about hmm, what happened to where? What was the reason why it didn't happen? What were some reasons why it didn't happen? And we, again, there's some stuff we will never know. But at the same time, we can uh, try to put little pieces together here and there from what he did get with Washington, what did happen with Washington. So anyway, thank you, be clean. I appreciate y'all. I love y'all so much. Um, and again, like I always say, thank you. Thank you. I, I appreciate everything that you all do. I appreciate who you all are as people. Um, I know there's that saying where uh i know it, it it usually goes for when you're on the road uh if somebody might cut you off or something like that somebody driving kind of crazy and they like and you driving behind them or next to them in front whatever and you're like man what are they doing and that can get you upset now like <laughs> road rage is real man that can get you upset that can get you heated but uh there's that saying don't let a bad 24 seconds ruin uh 24 hours um, then, then there's been sayings too where I've seen where uh, people who have been locked up for one thing or another, uh, but they'll be like, "Man, if I could just go back, I, 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 I let one bad confrontation or something like that ruin my life or change my life for the worse." Some just like that. So, and it's tough because again, we got emotions with people, we got feelings and all that, but um, don't let bad people ruin your good day so i love y'all i appreciate y'all and like eric being to me is when it comes to being with kansas city we out